Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to make randomly generated terrain using Berlin noise and a 2D array. Um, I'm on a blank base plate, except I deleted the base plate so there's absolutely nothing here except a script and with the script I'm going to be generating uh, some parts together and it should look like this. Okay, so the first thing I need to generate my terrain is a grid because my terrain is going to be a have two. It's going to have two dimensions. It's going to have an X and it's going to have a Z. I'm going to have parts that go along the X axis and parts that go go along the Z axis and everywhere in between. So it's going to be kind of a big square. And to do that, I'm going to make a grid, and that's just going to be a table. Well, more specifically, it's going to be an array. And it's also going to be a two-dimensional array, which means that it's going to be an array of arrays. Now, I'm going to go ahead and declare how big my grid is going to be on the X and Z axes. Like so. And for every X, I'm going to make another array inside this array. So to do that, I just use a for loop. And now um, for every count inside of X, which would be 15, it's going to make another array at that indice. I'm going to replace this with X so it makes a little more sense. And then for every uh, indice inside of here, I will have a value, and that will be the height at that specific spot on the grid, at that specific X, Z spot. So let's go ahead and make another for loop inside this for loop. And then at this specific spot in my two-dimensional array, I can go ahead and put whatever value, whatever value it want, I want. Uh, for now, I'm just going to put zero, but we'll go ahead and change it later, and this will be our height. Now, if I make a very similar set of for loops, we can go ahead and print out every single value in our two-dimensional array. So it'll go something like this. And then this will go ahead and make a string. We'll make a string for every uh, x, x row, and then for every um, z column inside that row, it will add the number or whatever value, uh, concatenate it with a space onto that row string, and then print it out. So if I go ahead and click run, actually let me click view output. And uh, this was from earlier. Uh, if I go ahead and click test run, you'll say it says uh, 0, 0, 0. And it prints the same thing exactly out uh, 15 times because it's all the same. So let me go ahead and make it a little bit different. Uh, instead of 0, we'll do. And this means um, <clears throat> basically 50% chance of it being 1 and 50% chance of it being 0. And now we have a basically a 2D array visualized of 1s and zeros. Now instead of printing it, let's actually put it into parts. So I'll just com comment that out. I'll do the same thing over here, but instead of rows, what we'll do is we'll make parts.
So there's my new part. I'm going to go ahead and anchor it right away. I'll go ahead and position it based on my X and Z variables. I do multiply by five just so that they're spaced out a little bit and not just like one stud apart. And then lastly, put them in the workspace. Okay, and if I go ahead and run this, you'll see that I have a simple grid of parts, each at their own X, Z position. Okay, so our parts that we made is a part grid that represents every X, Z position on the, on the grid, but it doesn't represent the actual values that are placed inside the grid, uh, which is currently a one or a zero in every spot. So to represent that uh, value, I'm gonna go ahead and place it into the Y coordinate of its position. To, to grab that, since I already have the X and the Z in this for loop, I'll go ahead and do grid, grid index X, index Z, and that will give me that value. I'm also gonna go ahead and change the uh, size of the part so that they don't have gaps in between them. I'm also gonna give them a height of 30 so they are tall columns. All right, so let's go ahead and see what that looks like. Okay, as you can see, uh, some of the parts are one stud higher and one of the, some of the studs are one stud lower because some are one and some are represented by zero. We wanna make this um, just like completely random. Every single part just has this complete, completely random number. I'll do something like math.random times 15. Go ahead and run that. And as you can see, we now have some parts that are just completely uh, at random Y values. Of course, this isn't quite terrain, but it is technically random, so we do have that so far. All right, so to make our terrain look a little bit more like terrain, we need to use a different type of generation for random numbers. Instead of using the math.random, we'll be using math.noise. And for a little bit of a background on what the two uh, different functions do, we're going to print 10 random numbers, and then we're going to print 10 noise-generated numbers and see what that looks like. So it's going to go something like this. For i equals 1, 10 do. Random numbered. And then I'm going to do the same thing, but with noise. Now, random, random doesn't need a uh, parameter. You just call it, and it'll give you a random number between 0 and 1. Noise does uh, need a parameter when you use it, because the parameter that you give it, in this case I'm doing i divided by 10, which will be 0.1, then 0.2, then 0.3, is the quote-unquote position along the noise graph. So there's a noise graph that's like a line that goes up and down. As you move your position along the noise line, you get a different number, and numbers that are close in position will be close to each other, and numbers that are far from each other could be uh, close to each other, they could be far from each other. So let's actually go ahead and print and see what this looks like. So I'm going to view the output right here, and I'm going to zoom in on that. So here's our 10 random numbers. Uh, we, as you can see, we have numbers all over the place between 0 and 1. Uh, 0 0.67, 0 0.9, 0 0.4, 4, 6, 3, 8, and so on. However, our noise numbers will be a little bit more uh, kind of in a line. So it starts out at 0 0.09. And by the way, uh, noise goes from negative 1 to 1. So it's not 0 to 1, it's negative 1 to 1. It floats around 0 and it goes negative and positive around 0. 
So right here we have 0.09, then 0.14, then 0 0.13, 0 0.08, 0. So right here it's like going up and then falling and then going negative and then going back up. So it's, it's like following a line, so to speak. So if we use noise instead of a completely random number, we might get a different result. All right, so going back to our train script, I'm going to just get rid of this for now. Well, actually just permanently because we don't really need that anymore, but uh, the main purpose is to replace math.random with math.noise. And for the argument, the position argument, I'm going to uh, just use my x and my z. Uh, I'm just going to use my x for now and divide it by 10 so it's in small steps. You can divide it by more uh, if you want. And let's go ahead and run that. And as you can see now we have a little bit of a wave going on. So it kind of goes up and down and back up. And this kind of represents that uh, that noise line. So at x.1 this is where it's at and then 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5 and as you can see each position along the line is a little bit close to the ones next to it but overall it's random. Now if we go ahead and use the second argument of math.noise you can actually make two dimensional noise because right now we just have one dimensional noise. I go ahead and add z to my arguments and do z divided by 10 as well. I can have two dimensional noise. And now my heights are changing uh, along the x axis as well as along the z axis. So I'm getting hills that go this way and hills that go that way as well. So now that we have kind of working terrain, I'm just going to go ahead and make it a little bit pretty. I'm uh, just going to go ahead and first of all move the that value into a variable and because I'm going to be using it in multiple places now uh, just I just like doing that and then I'll do something like this and that basically goes ahead and looks at the uh, grid xy which I put into a variable called y position and if that's less than zero we're gonna make that part sand and if it's greater than zero we're gonna make that grass so um, I'm also gonna go ahead and make this a little bit bigger so we can have a much larger terrain of course we can play with these values however we want to uh, that's a little bit too much sand for me so let's drop that number a little bit let's say less than negative three Okay, and now I'm going to go ahead and try to add a big water part to my grid. So, local water. <clears throat> Alright, so I've added a water part. It's got a bunch of properties. Uh, I'm not sure about the position yet, but I'm just going to try that in a minute. It basically just has it's a blue part that's supposed to be the size of the terrain and uh, just be blue and anchored, whatever. And it uh, looks like I got the size and the position right. Um, doesn't look like I got the uh, color right though, so let's go ahead and change that. Yep, that B is supposed to be a lowercase. And I'm also going to maybe increase the position a little bit. Right now it's negative six. Let's make it negative five. And this is supposed to be the number of grid spaces plus one <clears throat> times five, which is the size of each um, grid divided by two. And then same for z. And the y position is just negative five. So it's uh, just dropped down a little bit. And now I kind of have uh, these little ponds of water. Pretty cool. I could also change the top surface to not be studs, but uh, you get the idea. So that's my finished result. I uh, hope you guys like it. Let me know what you think. Um, if, there's, if there's anything you think I should maybe um, talk about, let me know. And until next time, I'll see you guys later.